Good morning, everyone, uh, and welcome to today's webinar on assessing records information and data risks. While the session will focus on assessing the risk to records, information and data within systems, the approach can also be applied to their other risks too. I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the various lands on which we are all gathering on, including the Dark Zhang people, the traditional custodians of the land from where I am presenting, being the Central Coast. I would also like to pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. Just some housekeeping as to how today's webinar will be run. Please make sure you have chat open. As everyone will need to remain muted for most of the session, please use chat for asking any questions or participating in the activities. There will be an opportunity, however, to unmute yourself at the end of the webinar and ask any questions. This session is being recorded and will be published on our website. If you have turned your camera on, please be aware you will appear in the recording. An email will be sent once the recording is uploaded, along with a copy of this presentation. If you do leave your camera on and encounter any connection issues, you may need to turn it off. Also, it's important that I stress from the outset that this webinar is about the general risks in managing records, information and data in systems. We are unable to talk about risk specific to your organization as this will depend on its risk management framework and individual operating environment. I recommend consulting with your risk manager, internal audit team, audit and risk committee or other risk management professional from your organization for assistance. So why a webinar series on records information and data risks? Well, when providing advice to public officers, our team will often add the disclaimer, whatever you decide to do, it should be based on a risk assessment and business needs. This could be regarding, for instance, managing source records following their migration or storing records, information and data within the cloud. However, as operating environments of public offices become more complex, further support is required in highlighting the various types of records, information and data risks faced, along with the possible strategies or actions in responding to them, providing a foundation in undertaking risk assessments to identify potential risks, their underlying causes, and what the consequences or impact may be to your organization, to your organization's records, information and data as well as effectively articulating and communicating records, information and data risks using a, formal, a formulaic structure. Put together, understanding, assessing and communicating risks appropriately will assist you in building a business case to secure executive buy-in and get the outcome you want, be it, for example, funding, staffing, additional systems or policy support, facilitating the integration of records, information and data risks into your organization's overall risk governance framework, as well as working towards meeting the minimum compliance requirements of the records management standard for ensuring records, information and data are identifiable, retrievable and accessible for as long as they are required and are protected from unauthorized or unlawful access, destruction, loss, deletion or alteration. But before we get into it, we're going to break the ice and get warmed up for today's discussion. So in chat, I'd like you to describe risk in one word. So I can see danger, concern, vulnerability, uncertainty. That's a good one. Money, definitely. Potential, that, that, that's a positive spin, yeah. Uncertainty again, oh, definitely. Chance. Threat, possibility, li likelihood, I like that term, yep. Yeah. Opportunity as well, definitely. Impact, yeah, exposure to risk, privacy um, legislation, yeah. Go or no go, unsafe, definitely. Hazards, yeah, I can see uncertainty, um, mentioned a few times, definitely. Cost, that's another one. 
potential. Yep, public reputation exposure, continuous improvement. All very good suggestions, yep, potential damages. Probability. Well, from the majority of your responses, um, we can see that risk is seen as undesirable. While this may be true, and as, as some of you mentioned uh, in chat, it's important to be aware that risk can also bring opportunity. Opportunities in protecting your records, information and data, or in strengthening systems to support their capture and management. However, in today's webinar, we will be reviewing those risks that may have a negative impact. So, what is risk? The Australian Risk Management Standard defines risk as any effect of uncertainty, which was a word that was mentioned a few times in chat. So it's any effect of uncertainty on objectives with effect being the deviation from the expected, which could be positive, negative or both, and can address, create or result in opportunities and or threats. While objectives have different aspects and categories and can be applied at different levels, while this definition alone may be a bit vague, you probably agree. In the context of records, information and data, risks are anything that may affect or impact their reliability and integrity, whereby, for instance, they are incomplete, inaccurate or untrustworthy. Their accessibility and retrieval in being able to locate retrieve or use records, information and data for as long as they are required. Their safe custody and not being protected from loss, unauthorized or unlawful access, alteration, destruction or deletion. Their retention in not being kept for as long as they are required or being kept for too long. Or their ownership where it is lost to a third party, for example. In summary, Risk to records, information and data are anything that may affect or impact their characteristics, access to, from, and their function in providing evidence or information. For records, information and data within systems, the objectives are to maintain their reliability, integrity, accessibility and retrieval by having controls in place that will ensure their safe custody, retention and ownership during, for instance, the system design and configuration process, uh, during system integration, uh, system migration, record format selection, and moving to cloud-based business or storage environments. While some risks to records, information and data in systems may be a result in failures in technology, others will be due to failures from non-existent or inadequate processes or procedures, or they may simply be events that, that just happen. So, where do we start in assessing these risks? Well, we begin by following these three steps. Step one, identify the potential risk scenarios that may occur and their underlying causes, threats and weaknesses. This also includes identifying what controls are already in place for managing or responding to the risk, such as existing processes, policies or practices. Step two, Assess what their consequences or impact may be and the likelihood of them occurring. And again, during chat, we saw that likelihood was a, a word that was raised a few times. Three, decide how you're going to treat the risks. That is, are you going to respond by accepting the risk as is, applying controls to mitigate the risk, transferring or sharing the risk, or avoiding the risk completely, maybe even a combination? These three steps are not only important in understanding the makeup of risks, but in also undertaking risk assessments in a methodical and consistent way. For each risk identified following the three steps, you will be able to articulate what the risk is. That is the risk scenario or event that will affect the records, information and data, what the cause or causes of the risk are and what their consequences may be. It is important to note that risk assessments will also vary in scale and formality from small to large and informal to formal, which will in turn dictate the types of techniques employed in identifying and assessing risks. 
the type of a, uh, risk assessment you adopt should be based on the complexity or value of the records information and data held or to be held in the system, as well as your organization's risk management framework. Consult with those responsible in your organization for risk management as to expectations before undertaking risk assessments. For an in-depth look at the types of techniques that could be used for assessing risks, refer to the Australian New Zealand Risk Management Standard 31010. The link to the standard is on your screen. This link will also be provided again in our follow-up email. So let's look at these steps in more detail. In identifying risks as part of step one, we need to first detect the causes, threats and weaknesses that exist in your agency's operating environment. By doing this, we can then identify the risk events and scenarios that may occur as a result. Therefore, in undertaking step one, we need to ask ourselves, what risk scenario event might happen? How might it happen? When might it happen? And why might it happen? There may be a variety of causes, threats and weaknesses that exist in your agency's operating environment that may directly or indirectly affect the management of records, information and data within your systems. Causes, threats and weaknesses include your agency's core functions and activities, organisational changes, for example, restructuring and outsourcing of functions, legal and regulatory changes, as well as political changes, for example, changes in government or in government priorities and policies. The IT environment, both within and outside the agency, and community expectations. Controls already in place to deal with the risk should also be identified and they will need to be assessed as part of step two in determining their effectiveness. For a more complete list of causes, threats and weaknesses, please see our new guidance titled Records, Information and Data Risks on our website. The link is on your screen. This link will also be provided in our follow-up email too. Following the identification of risks and their causes, the second step is to assess each risk and estimate their severity by asking what controls are in place and are they operating as intended? What is the likelihood that the risk will occur? And what are the consequences or impact on the records information or data if they do? Assessing the likelihood of identified risks occurring and their consequences if they do is twofold. The first being to quantify the risk, that is estimate the severity of the risk. And the second is determining what treatment or additional treatment the risk requires and whether it needs to be addressed as a priority. Quantifying the risk will help you frame it in terms of the tangible business impact on records information and data, be it in dollars, hours lost in productivity or reputation, for example. This will assist you in your assessment as to how to proceed in responding to the risk. Please remember, however, that risk should be assessed and prioritized in line with your organization's risk management framework. After the risks have been assessed, you then need to decide how they should be managed. The risk appetite of your organization, that is the amount and type of risk your organization is willing to tolerate, will help you decide whether treatment is required, including the prioritization of treatment for individual risks. Records information and data identified as high value and high risk should be prioritized for treatment due to their significance. For identifying high value and high risk records information and data, please refer to the guidance. The link to the guidance is on the screen. This link will also be provided in our email. In responding to risks, common treatment options include accept the risk, that is the do nothing strategy. So this is when the risk is at an acceptable level or the cost of treatment outweighs the benefits. This option also covers situations where residual risk remains after other treatment options have been put in place. Although no further action is taken, you may want to implement a contingency plan and apply ongoing monitoring. Mitigation, taking action by implementing controls to either reduce the likelihood of the risk occurring, such as through policies, procedures, guidelines, training and monitoring, 
and or the potential consequences if the risk does occur. For example, planning for contingencies, changing the design of the system and minimizing the exposure to sources of risk to an acceptable level where elimination is considered to be excessive in terms of time or expense. It is important to note that the likelihood of a risk occurring and any subsequent consequences can be treated separately. For example, you may decide to put in place treatment to reduce the likelihood of the risk occurring in the first place. If you then determine that the impact from the risk is still too high if it were to occur, you would then treat it accordingly. Another option is transferring or sharing the risk. So transferring or sharing the risk with another party who is willing to accept the consequences, for example, um, escalating the risk to higher management or ensuring against the risk. And the last option is avoiding the risk. So this is where um, an alternative option is selected, which is less risky as the, uh, as the consequences of the risk is deemed too high. Selection of the most appropriate risk treatment approach should be developed in consultation with relevant stakeholders. For example, the owners of the records, information and data assets, business system owners and owners of the business process or processes. Ongoing monitoring and review of the risk treatment implemented should be undertaken to ensure its continued effectiveness. As mentioned earlier, for each risk identified following these three steps, you should be able to articulate what the risk is, the risk that is the risk scenario event that will affect the records information and data, what the cause or causes of the risk are, including the threats and weaknesses, and what their consequences may be, or in formulaic terms articulated as risk equals scenario or event that has an effect on records information and data and is caused by and then you list your causes here, resulting in potential consequences. As risks are generally described and communicated in form of risk statements, use, using the formula you see on your screen will be a helpful tool in articulating and communicating these risks in building a business case to secure executive support, as mentioned earlier, enabling consistency in how the risks are documented in your organization's relevant risk register, as well as, as, well as in its information asset register if applicable, and in improving maturity in identifying and managing records information and data risks, which are reported on in the annual monitoring exercise, which was recently held. The risk statements of identified risks should be documented in a risk register to facilitate its management and monitoring. Depending on the size of your organization, a hierarchy of risk registers may exist. For example, an organization-wide risk register for high-level risks down to register registers for individual business units. Consider developing a register for all records, information, and data risks where appropriate. If one does not, if one does not already exist, Alternatively, if the risks are not high enough, include their management in your unit or team's annual operations plan or as part of business as usual practices. Your organization may already use a formula similar to the one that you see on the screen. However, if you're unsure, please check with the relevant risk professionals in your organization. For the purposes of today's webinar, however, we'll be using the format that you see on your screen. So this is where we come to the fun part, the risk scenarios. So we're now going to apply the three steps and the risk statement formula that we've just reviewed to four different risk scenarios that we want to avoid for records information and data, for records information and data within your systems. Okay, so a risk scenario or event we want to avoid relating to the reliability and the integrity of records information and data would be high value information missing from a migrated data set. A potential cause of this may be that the quality checking undertaken post migration was inadequate and didn't pick up the missing information. Consequences from the risk occurring include that the system produces inaccurate analysis and reporting, poor system uptake by users and the benefits of the migration project are not realized and non-compliance with the standard on records management and is therefore a breach of the State Records Act. So let's put this all together 
using our risk statement formula. So we need to first add what the risk scenario or event is. In this example, it's high value information missing from a migrated data set. Now we need to add that the cause of this was from inadequate post migration quality checking. In terms of which consequence to select, you want to add the consequence with the greatest impact. That is the consequence that is more likely to secure the support you need from management, as well as assist you in identifying the most appropriate form or forms of treatment in responding to the risk. In this instance, I have determined that the breach of the state's record act will have the greatest impact. Based on this consequence, I have identified three, tre three different treatments in responding to the risk. As you go down the list of treatments, you will notice that they escalate in terms of effort level. The treatments selected by individual organizations may vary depending on what is more feasible in regards to their particular circumstances in either avoiding or reducing the likelihood or impact from the risk occurring. In this scenario, as we are assuming that the risk event has occurred, and so we just need to reduce its level of impact. Okay, so can anyone suggest other possible consequences or treatments from their own experience? Um, if you can, you could put that um, in chat, if you do. Or alternatively, um, if you have any queries in what's been um, raised in this table, um, you could add your questions to chat as well. So has anyone undertaken a recent uh, migration project where they identified um, maybe a similar risk scenario event and identified potentially other consequences and, and how they went about um, uh, treating it if it were to occur? Yeah, oh, I like that one, Paul. Inability to respond effectively to litigation, yeah, GIPA and standing orders, that's great. Operational functions affected. Yep, again, GIPA requests. You must have read my mind because um, we talk about GIPA in the next slide. How large is the missing data set? I guess um, it could oh, vary in size. So that that's another um, point to consider too in terms of the size of, of the data set and as to the types of records information held in it as to the, the severity of the risk. It, um, records information were missing um, in the migrated um, system. Yeah, additional cause migration is not part of the project. Yep, no, that's a great one where it's not included within the scope. So um, how you could go about with the potential uh, consequences and how you could go about treating that too. The financial impact, if info, yeah, if information doesn't come across. Uh, I know that that's in terms of the financial impact um, in uh, the audit officer's reports. I've seen that they mentioned that. Um, yeah, um, that's a great one, Sh uh, Shannon, in regards to not missing but mapped incorrectly. That, that, that's an important one and that sometimes that can be missed from the scope of the project too. So that, that that's something to consider. Potential consequence on effective management of sensitive information. Exactly making sure that not only um, that information isn't missing, but is the appropriate security and access controls in place in uh, the new system as well. Yeah, so that's a great one. Susanna, inability to access the information as it requires special software need to transfer to different format. And that's particularly important um, for records information and data that have long um, retention periods too. Got to um, make sure that that's part of our migration projects. All, all fantastic um, responses that I'm seeing in chat. No, no, that, that's really great. So we'll, we'll move on to the second um, scenario now. 
Okay, so a risk scenario event that we want to avoid relating to accessibility and retrieval of records information and data would be the systemic failure to locate information for GIPA requests, which some of you mentioned in the previous slide. A possible cause of this may be that information and data is held in disparate systems, including shadow systems. In case there is anyone who doesn't know what a shadow system is, it is a system that a staff member or members may use, which isn't approved or supported by your agency. Potential consequences from this systemic failure include a waste of resources, such as time and extra staff were redirected to a system locating the data and information, the GIPA applicants lodging requests for external reviews with Information and Privacy Commission, which then leads to the Commission launching an investigation into these failures. So let's pull this all together uh, using our risk statement formula. So we've added that the risk scenario event is a systemic failure to locate information for GIPA requests. And the cause of this is from information and data being held in disparate systems, including shadow systems. From our list of consequences, the one that I have, I have identified as having the greatest weight is the, IP, is the IPC launching an investigation into these failures, this, as this may also lead to media and public scrutiny as well. Using this consequence, you can see that possible treatment options escalate once more as we go down the list, starting with the implementation of policy and procedures through to the adoption of information governance initiatives, including implementing e-discovery systems and creating and maintaining a register of all information assets in both current and legacy systems. So once again, I'm gonna um, put it over to yourselves. Um, as to whether you can suggest any other possible consequences or treatments based on their own experience, or if anyone has any queries in regards to what's being raised on this particular slide, I'll, I'll hand it over to yourselves. Yes, we can see reputational risk. That, that's a good one. That's the very important one. Hire additional staff to respond to the GIPA requests. Yep, that, that's a, yep. And that, I guess you could say that would be a potentially a like escalation in the, in the treatment as well. Um, information held in silos and not discoverable, oh, definitely. And, and that's where the, um, uh, the e-discovery uh, would be helpful in that regard as well. Um, yeah, inability to provide a service, that's an important one because at the end of the day, um, that's what we're, um, we're here to do is to provide a service. Um, Consequent public lose trust as agency appears non-transparent, definitely, definitely. And, and with GIPA, that, that is the, the essence of that piece of legislation is to be um, transparent and accountable. Uh, lost information if the staff member holding the data resolve, oh, exactly, exactly like for those shadow systems. Um, oh, assessing for email vaults, definitely. Uh, financial cost of legal action, again, breach of legislation, treatment, uh, training and communications to manage staff behaviour. Exactly as part of any um, implementation strategy, uh, training and education is definitely an important part um, in getting it across the organisation. Um, financial effort to find and extract, oh, definitely the, the financials um, is an important, and I guess that, that might be you find in, uh, for your risk statement, that might be the consequence that gives the greatest weight um, to get uh, management on board. Um, oh, that's no problem, Susan. Uh, thanks for attending. Uh, Vicky information not stored in corporate EDMS. Ex exactly, and if, if that is the official or approved repository for your organization, um, that that's an important one. Uh, integrity loss. Uh, what is the authentic source of truth? Exa oh, that's, oh, you, you touched on a key issue there, um, Katrina. Um, you could have all very diff different versions um, of the one document, but as you say, what is the correct one? And, and just because maybe it is the latest version, um, you know, but there could be a potential that um, the released version was an, was an earlier revision of that document. So that, that's definitely um, an important consideration. All, again, all fantastic um, uh, suggestions and consequences and, and treatments that um, that you've added in chat. Okay, so let's go to the third um, 
risk scenario that we want to avoid. So another one we want to avoid relating to the safe custody of records, information and data would be the loss of digital and hard copy records held by a third party provider due to a natural disaster. While the focus of this webinar is on records, information and data held in systems, I also wanted to use this opportunity to highlight the storage of hard copy records given the recent floodings in New South Wales. So a possible cause for this loss is that no business continuity and counter disaster and recovery plans were in place that covered records. Uh, you, you may think oh, for some of yourselves, oh, that's um, maybe a bit too far out there, but um, there are instances that you know, this, has, this has occurred. Um, so possible consequences um, for this include the impact on service delivery, which you, um, some of you mentioned uh, in regards to the, uh, as a previous consequence scrutiny from the public office in their performance audit report of your agency as you are unable to produce requested information and lot of irreplaceable New South Wales documentary heritage. So again, let's put this all together using the risk statement formula. So we've added that the risk scenario or event is the loss of digital and hard copy records held by a third party provider due to a natural disaster. And the cause of this is due to there being no business continuity and counter disaster and recovery plans in place that covers records. From our list of consequences, the one that I have identified as having the greatest um, weight in this instance is the loss of irreplaceable New South Wales documentary heritage. In treating the potential loss um, of this documentary heritage, uh, but uh, business continuity and counter disaster and recovery plans would need to be developed, implemented and monitored. So there is no escalation in treatment for this particular scenario, given that these would need to be um, applied regardless. So again, once more, I'm going to um, hand over to you in as to whether you can identify any other potential consequences and what treatment you could put in place um, in regards to this risk scenario, as well as if you have any questions um, as to what's been raised in this table. Ah, oh, Joe, yes, most it's definitely um, uh, a good time, yes, yeah, to raise this issue and because um, it, a lot of the time you think, oh, it's not going to happen, but unfortunately um, it, it does. It only takes that one time. And um, yes, as as Jay mentioned, to lose records. Yeah, so another one, Angela, yeah, is the breach of the state's Record Act and Standard. Yep, that's another consequence as well. And I guess uh, a lot of the time you, you probably are going to come across a range of consequences. And I guess it's identifying which is the one um, that's going uh, have the the most severe uh, impact on your records information and data as to how, as we mentioned before, go about effectively treating it. So, um, so oh, lost hard copy records and oh, and a physical server in the recent floods. That's oh, thanks for mentioning that, Joe. Um, in regards to the server, um, it's good because a lot of the time we just think in terms of disaster, just hard copy, but yeah, servers as well. Uh, Lynette, yep, loss of reputation and community questioning abilities. Um, yep, Susanna May in, uh, included in the contract agreement requirement to have a disaster recovery plan. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, potential, potential issues in privacy. Um, definitely in terms of maybe hard copy records, um, depending on if, uh, if they weren't secured, maybe in a flood whether they left the premises um, and the documentation contains sensitive information. That's another consideration. Uh, may yet treatment for paper based records, digitalization. Exactly, exactly. Putting in a digitalization um, a, a, a project again, getting the resources uh, for that from from management. Cause. Um, yet provider doesn't meet the requirements of approved reports. Exactly. So again, applying um, the requirements from the, um, the storage standard. Angela, uh, hopefully these losses will result in more willingness to transfer sta oh, exactly state archives to Kingswood. So it's making sure that um, you may have a disposal program, but um, how regularly are you um, disposing or 
destroying of records and transferring uh, state archives um, to SARA, definitely. Uh, Jason cause retaining records longer than required by yep yeah, exactly so um, I guess that's in terms of physical uh, sorry in terms of um, digital records that could be in terms of trying to locate records information and data if you have um, records information records information and data could have been destroyed ages ago it, it can um, take up a lot of space um, make retrieval inefficient um, wool stores. Oh, Angela. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, don't store records in old wool stores. Yeah. Uh, Ron, uh, delays in restoring. Um, yeah, business ex exactly. And I guess that's what we all aim for is um, getting back to uh, business as usual. Yeah. I, again, fan fantastic responses. So now we're going to move on to our last scenario. And so, uh, this scenario that um, in this instance that we want to avoid is relating to the retention of records, information and data um, regarding the destruction of drafts containing significant decisions that are not included in the final version. A possible cause of this may be due to an ambiguous policy on the retention and disposal of significant uh, drafts, working papers, etc. Possible consequences include complaints such as from the public regarding this information um, not being available and in turn leading to media scrutiny, along with the destruction of these drafts being a breach of the State Records Act. So let's put this all together using our risk statement formula once more. So we've added that the risk scenario or event is the destruction of drafts containing significant decisions that are not included in the final version. And the cause of this is from an ambiguous policy on the retention and disposal of significant drafts, working papers, etc. From our list of consequences, and to change it up a bit, I've identified media scrutiny as having the greatest impact if this were to occur. And for your organization, this might um, be um, uh, have the greatest weight, I should say, in uh, getting a putting together a business case and, and selling it to them. So in avoiding or mitigating media scrutiny, the policy and relevant procedures and business rules would need to be updated in order to clearly articulate what can and can't be disposed of under NAP. As part of their implementation, as, and as um, was mentioned in the, uh, for the previous slide, awareness sessions and training will need to be launched for staff and ongoing auditing and monitoring compliance initiatives launched. There is again no escalation in treatment as the awareness sessions and training form part of implementing the updated policy and supporting documentation with ongoing auditing and monitoring also required to ensure compliance. So again, does anyone have any other consequences or treatments uh, from their own experiences that they would like to share or um, do you have any questions in regards to what's being raised in this table? Clear guard, yes, clear, oh, definitely a verified understanding of what constitutes. I guess it also involves um, having all levels of staff um, involved so they understand the wording, so it's user friendly. Um, it could be, yeah, Paul, it can be a breach of code of conduct depending on agency. Yeah, definitely. Um, lots of rework, but, oh, for, for sure, for sure. Susanna, identify key document drafts which must be kept. Exactly. Um, I guess, yes, so it's about, it's very important that it's communicated. Um, us ourselves uh, working records, we understand the importance um, of, uh, you know, pre earlier revisions uh, not being destroyed if they contain significant decisions or other information, but it might be that um, this needs to be communicated as well uh, to staff at all levels on a regular basis. Um, just to reinforce this. Okay, Jason, treatment provide wide access to EDMS that captures, yes, draft revisions of uh, corporate value. That's very important, so all revisions are captured. Um, uh, inability to provide evidence, yep, yeah, to LEC. Kate, might lead to poor future decision-making due to lack of important facts. And again, I guess that's around um, transparency and accountability. Uh, Angela used recent example in Premier's office to highlight the risk yet yeah, to manager to management. Exactly, the, a similar instance happened recently with the Premier's office. Um, 
So there is, uh, there is a report available as to uh, what was recommended. Um, Antonio, another GIPA legislation breach. Yeah, no, exactly. And it's amazing how um, similar consequences uh, in kind of similar forms of treatment um, it can be applied when it comes to um, managing these records information and data risks. And again, yeah, um, great suggestions in forms of consequences and treatment. So thank you for taking the time to do that. OK, so let's bring everything that we have discussed this morning together. So this webinar, as you probably um, could tell, was a jumping board to help you start thinking about the different types of risks you may face in managing records, information and data within systems. This included reviewing the different types of records, information and data risks being reliability and integrity, accessibility and retrieval, safe custody, retention and ownership, using the, th using the three, step, three step risk assessment process as a structure in identifying the potential risk scenarios that may occur and their underlying causes, threats and weaknesses, assessing what their consequences or impact would be and the likelihood of them occurring, and deciding how you're going to treat the risks, such as through acceptance, mitigation, transfer, transference, avoidance, or maybe a combination of these. And describing the risks in the form of risk statements so they can be effectively communicated in your organization's relevant risk register in facilitating treatment and monitoring. This jumping board will assist you in effectively articulating and communicating records, information and data risks in building a business case to secure executive support, be it for funding, staffing, additional systems or policy support, for example, working towards addressing minimum compliance requirements from the standard on records management for ensuring records, information and data are identifiable, retrievable and accessible for as long as they are required, protected from unauthorized or unlawful access, destruction, loss, deletion or alteration. Maintaining consistency in how the risks are documented in your organization's relevant risk register, as well as in its information asset register if applicable. If you do not have an information asset register or the identified risks are not high enough to be placed in a risk register, include their management as suggested earlier in your unit or team's annual operations plan or as part of business as usual practices. Improving maturity in identifying and managing records, information and data risks which are reported on or in our new annual monitoring exercise. However, prior to undertaking any risk assessments, Please liaise with the relevant risk professionals in your organization to ensure um, to ensure uh, to ensure you, uh, you facilitate the integration of records, information and data risks within the organization's overall risk governance framework. Now, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask regarding what's been covered this morning, um, please raise your hands and unmute yourself. Kelly, yes. Yeah, hi, I just wanted to know, um, I'm not sure if I missed it, but how do we know how long we have to keep records for? So that, yeah, how long, so that would be based on the retention and disposal authority. So it would yep. depend on uh, the types of records that you create or receive um, yeah. as part of your business function and activities. Mm -hmm. So definitely one would be GA 20A, which covers general administrative records. So, uh, so which organisation are you from, Kelly? Hunter and Central Coast Development Corporation. So, so Department of Planning, yep. So Department of Planning. So yep. I don't know off um, the top of my head, but I, I'm happy to send you uh, the link um, to the page which lists all the different um, retention and disposal authorities. Unless Angela, who is our retention and disposal authority guru, might know <laughs> off the top of her head. 
Um, yeah, you definitely covered it's FA260 or FA262. I can't remember, but it, it's one of those that covers all the development corporations, so you are covered. They are a little bit old yep. and they might need a bit of revision, but um, they definitely cover you, so you should be 100% covered. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So can you send me that information? Or sure. Yeah, we get that? yeah that'd be great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Not a problem, Kelly. Does anyone have it, um, other questions that may have been raised um, in regards to what, what was discussed or wanted to uh, cover any information that was raised in the steps or in regards to the risk statement formula? Or have um, any um, anecdotes that they would like to share in regards to um, a, 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 uh, say it was part of a migration project or um, about identifying risks um, for records information in systems um, and in terms of how they went about um, identifying the causes or uh, the potential consequences and how they went about uh, treating those risks and whether there was success, um, whether they ended up having to apply their contingency plan. I know it's a lot of information to take in and I'm sure a lot of you uh, will probably be going back and, and looking at the recording and um, reviewing this PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, um, Al, I wonder if it's worth pointing out the big um, decommissioning project that eHealth are doing at the moment. I'm not sure if there's anyone from eHealth here, but they've got a working party and they're sending us through spreadsheets just to make sure that they're on the right track before they dispose of anything. Yes, so um, as Angela mentioned, um, uh, we're um, assisting eHealth with their large um, system decommissioning project. And so they're, as, as Angela mentioned, sending us um, the systems that are being decommissioned um, and then we're just helping them identify the potential and data being held in that in those systems. So if, if you um, have a potential project coming up like that, um, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. And I guess that kind of plays into the risk factor too um, uh, with as a form of treatment. So if you're not sure um, as to what are the relevant disposal classes um, for the records information and data, um, that uh, might be a, a form of treatment that you can get in touch with our team um, to assist you with that. Uh, I know we've assisted other teams too in regards to um, the standing up, uh, the decommissioning and standing up of the other systems, just in regards to, um, again, relevant disposal classes. So that's um, so that's a consideration um, that you may want to think about if you're thinking in, in the new future of decommissioning and um, standing up a new system. Uh, I can see that uh, we have, yes, a couple of questions. So Jo, um, what's your question? Yeah, um, no, I was just going to share, um, share something um, oh, perfect. So, yeah, local land services and, and ASAR has been extremely helpful towards us. When we kicked off this project, we actually started with the an inventory of all the hard copy records across the state and we found that was that were, has worked really well for change management. So we were 26 agencies that became one over time, um, you know, and have a thousand staff and I don't know, something about 80 offices and, and we just had oh, wow. filing cabinets and garden sheds and roofs and all sorts of stuff filled with documentation. So that's how we started it. We got every every office to assess all their hard copy records and put they're in a in a uh, spreadsheet. And then we sort of allocated retention authorities um, to, to the records and just sort of started educating all the staff that way. So then we at, before we moved into um, the next that, that's what we're still up to before we move into the electronic stage. Yeah, exactly. And I guess um, with these uh, uh, these types of projects as well. It's not a case that you have to um, tackle 
the whole elephant at the one time. You could just take it in stages like you have done where you've undertaken the first stage, for instance, and then the second stage might be the digitization of those records. And I guess as well, it's um, a perfect opportunity with hard copy records when you start reviewing what you have is and sentencing them if they weren't previously identifying what can um, is uh, ready for disposal and potentially if there are any state archives that can be transferred um, uh, to SARA too. Uh, Susanna, yes, what's your question? I wanted to, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Um, yep. I just wanted you. to say that, oh, thank you so much for the example. They were a really great example. I wondered if um, you would um, provide us with uh, like uh, another, like another listing of examples that we can refer to and especially around like things like your M365 that's, you know, quite um, prominent that's coming out and people are putting things in there and, you know, just, uh, I know that they've, uh, each organization have different strategies, but just some of the risks that, that could, um, you know, occur within that space as well because it's new. Oh, exactly. There are um, in the the records information and data risk guidance, there are general uh, like general risks and we are actually wanting to um, and uh, a slide that we'll be uh, touching on um, very shortly is asking for people to um, provide their anecdotes or experiences um, in terms of uh, risks that they um, identified um, along with causes, consequences and treatment to assist other public officers in undertaking these types of projects or even just identifying um, the range of risks uh, that might be applicable in a um, according to a particular situation. So, but definitely um, we're wanting to grow on this list um, in the current guidance. So um, that, that's that's fantastic that you've shown interest in that and um, in regards to the M365. And we do have guidance as well on um, uh, M365. So I can include the link to that piece of guidance as well um, in the follow-up email too. Yep, thank you. Oh, no worries. Thanks for your question, Susanna. Ron. What's your question? Uh, yes, um, we're looking at using artificial intelligence to help clean up our network drives. So I think one of the things that um, I'm concerned about there is what would the risks around not capturing, like the, the process not identifying documents that might be of value or undervaluing those and treating them as rot. Oh, okay. I might, uh, Irene, um, she uh, knows a little bit about the AI. I was just wondering uh, whether you would have any uh, suggestions for Ron. Um, it's actually a good question, Ron, and you can you definitely keep us on our toes all the time. Um, I must say that um, in terms of artificial intelligence, I think that's one of the risks around it is that the fact that it's in a block box sometimes mode and um, and I think if you follow, so I know that there's a guidance that was released by, I think the Digital New South Wales, wherein they basically looked at all the scenarios or all the, they've got this information um, assurance or AI information assurance um, checklist that you can definitely use for that one. But in terms of from a records perspective, um, what Alana had provided earlier in terms of the retention, so it's on that over retention or under retention side of things. So it is those risk around that one. Um, so I don't know whether that actually answers your question, but what we could do is that we can take it offline and then we can discuss it a bit further to unpack. Yeah, if you could send risks. me that um, yeah. information, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Um, National Archives tried to do a bit of sentencing. <laughs> like that of their trim system, the problem they found was the system kept identifying crap as national archives. So there's kind of the, it goes the other way as well as a, it was pretty dumb to begin with and I'm not sure it's got any better, but it was identifying crap as like crown jewels. So just yeah. another take on that. Yeah, and, um, but I can't, I don't know whether you remember that State Archives and Records actually done a AI machine learning project a couple of years ago. So I think that was back in 2018 and we've actually posted our results on those items or on those projects. And what we found out is that um, the results were really 
based on how good your training data set is. So if you've got a really good training data set, then it can you can say that um, 85% is actually pretty good in determining those retention as well. Um, I can definitely send you a link also to those um, case studies that we've published. It's, it's in future proof, I think. Oh, great. Thank you, Irene and Angela. I've noticed that it's 11.27, so I'll just um, run through the last few. Oh, so we've got, hang on, we've got, oh, Gavin, yes. Well, Gavin, you have a question? Just point out one risk that uh, we came, we actually came across. Uh, in oh, okay. Oh, fantastic. Um, and it was one that was um, never even thought about. Um, essentially, uh, we came across an issue where some of our data hadn't come across pr properly, um, and it was found in checking. Um, and it was due to the database not having the correct information. Um, so the actual EDRMS system um, database didn't, ha didn't store the information properly. Um, and so that was one of those things we actually never th thought could happen. Um, About, yeah, the quality of the information in the, in the source system. Yes. Um, so we were actually quite fortunate that we picked that up through our testing. Oh, excellent. And so was it um, large scale? Um, in terms of like the amount of the, the volume that had to be corrected? Uh, approximately uh, 4 million images. Oh, wow. Um, and so do you mind me asking, so with the quality, was it just the quality of the, the pictures itself or? Uh, it, it was the location, the file location in which they were being stored. So um, the system was broken up into, it stored things in numerous caches. Oh, okay. um, and it was essentially saying this image was being held in cache A, um, but it actually wasn't. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, so the the metadata. Um, so the the file path essentially. The file path was it? Yeah. Was oh, wow. So the, the that's something that um, it might not be something that you would consider as part of yeah as part of that migration project. So th yeah, thank you for. Um, putting your hands up and providing your example. That's greatly appreciated. Yeah, so it's just one of those little warnings out there for everyone, anyone doing migrations. Um, yeah, don't always assume the your database from, is always correct. <laughs> but that's great that you implemented the user testing too. That's definitely an important part of um, any uh, system or decommissioning and standing up a new system is that uh, user testing because uh, people will definitely let you know if it's not working and it'll be picked up very quickly that's for sure okay so before we finish um, I just have two more uh, matters to touch on Um, so today we have reviewed the risks for managing records, information and data within systems. But what about other types of risks that may impact your records, information and data? As part of our webinar series, we are wanting to know if you'd be interesting, interested in having future webinars run on the following topics. Identifying and managing high value and high risk records, information and data or risk or, and or I should say, risks from natural disaster and unforeseen circumstances. You may find these topics of particular importance after having recently completed or been involved in our inaugural annual monitoring exercise. So you, you, you may want to um, let us know now if, you, if you'd be interested in these topics or I will be sending feedback as well. So you could let us know um, in the feedback survey as to whether you'd be interested um, in, in those topics. Yes, okay, excellent. Okay, perfect. So we look like getting um, a lot of positive feedback. That, that's fantastic. Oh, excellent. Okay. And then if there is another risk related topic uh, that you think might be appropriate um, for other people as well, um, we're, happy, we're definitely open to suggestions. So um, 
as I mentioned earlier, to embed um, your anecdotes and experiences. Um, we would be very happy to accept these anecdotes and experiences in regards to building on the risks um, listed in our records information and data risk guidance. So we see that as being a benefit for all public officers. Um, and assisting each other, uh, so to speak, in regards to it might be um, not even big system related, but it could be just risks that you came across um, that was mentioned earlier that you hadn't thought about that um, other public officers might uh, benefit from as well. Um, if you do have any anecdotes, I would be uh, very happy to receive them. And you can email our team at govrec at records.newsouthwales.gov.au. Thank you for your time today. Uh, if you do have any questions following this webinar, our team's contact details are on the screen and there are also a variety of uh, resources available on our website. Um, as mentioned earlier at the beginning of today's session, I will be sending an email once the recording of today's webinar has been uploaded to our website. Enjoy the rest of your day and thank you for your time.